we may also have the charges arranged in some pattern. That pattern may demand us to find the field at any point outside of the triangle that describes the orientation of those three charges, or on one of the sides, or inside. If we are to place the field in the center here, I'll just choose for an example because it'll allow us to make use of what we've just learned with respect to charges on a line. I'm going to have a field due to this charge, which I'll call Q1, which will point downwards. A field from Q2 pointing away from Q2. And a field due to Q3 pointing away from Q3. So I'll have three fields acting at this point, P. Fields from Q2 and Q3 can be added directly. One is subtracting from the other. If it ends up pointing to the right or the left, this will be, de be dependent on which field is stronger. But when we want to add E1 into this derivation, we can't just add it in because it's not in a line. It's on an angle to the other two. In this diagram here, it appears to be at 90 degrees, but there's nothing stating that it has to be that way. I could give you a problem where this positive charge is over above Q3, and now its field is pointing on an angle to the other two. Whatever the case may be, the summing of these vectors is going to be done much the same way. The field at P will be, first of all, determined by summing E3 with E2. Now I'm going to say that E3 is a negative pointing left and then I'm going to add the field due to Q2. If this sum ends up being greater than zero, then we know that E2 has to be greater than E3. In which case, the sum of these fields points to the right. We're going to let E23 be this field. Now we have this field sum, E23, and we now have to add that to E1. In order to do that, we need to know the angle between those two fields. That is going to involve some trigonometry. The trigonometry that will involve will be dependent on the type of information you're given in the orientation that's been provided. And certainly there will be enough information to determine what the angle is between this field sum E23 and field E1. If E1 is at a right angle to E23, then we would have a sum that would look like this. Okay, we're stating again that E2 is bigger than E3, so we get a small vector or large, depending on the relative sizes of those two, pointing that direction, and we have E1 pointing directly down. Again, this is just a particular case chosen to be on any angle. But if it was at a right angle, we would end up having a vector sum, which would involve a right angle triangle. So therefore, a tangent relationship, a sine relationship, something that would allow us to find this angle here. And this would end up being 
the field that we're looking for. So we'd have a, a field sum due to these three charges at this point P pointing on some angle to the line joining Q2 to Q3.